Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at strange particles and strangeness, quarks and strangeness, strange particle decay, and we're going to finish off with a summary. So, so far we have briefly encountered strange particles and the idea of strangeness. However, now we're going to look at them both in a lot more detail. We can see the decay of kaons in a cloud chamber with a characteristic V-shape. So this V-shape here is the characteristic shape of kaon decay. Observations of these decays showed that kaons had longer lifetimes than expected from their mass and size. So, for example, this shorter lifetime was the predicted kaon lifetime, and then this was the observed kaon lifetime. It was longer than expected. For this reason, kaons were called strange particles. So this here is a kaon, and because of the unexpected length of their lifetimes, kaons were called strange particles. We now know that these long relative lifetimes are due to the fact that kaons decay through the weak interaction rather than the strong interaction. So if they were to decay via the strong force, then it would have been found that they'd have a shorter lifetime. However, this isn't the case. Instead, kaons decay via the weak force. So that's the force that's actually responsible for their decay. And that's why they have a longer lifetime than expected. Strange particles are particles which are created through the strong interaction and decay through the weak interaction. So the strong force here is responsible for creating kaons and other strange particles. So this is a kaon and we said this is a type of strange particle. However, then strange particles decay via the weak interaction. So they're created through the strong force and then they decay through the weak force. We know that in pair production, an antiparticle is always created along with its corresponding particle in order to conserve charge. So we've said that a photon can actually create a particle-antiparticle pair. So this is our photon here, and in pair production it creates a particle and then its corresponding antiparticle. Strange particles are always created in pairs for similar reasons. However, strange particles are created via the strong force. In this case, the reason they are created in pairs is to conserve a quantity known as strangeness. So now we're going to look at this idea of strangeness in a bit more detail by looking at quarks. The strangeness of a kaon is determined by its quark composition. So for example, this here is the quark composition for a neutral kaon. And we can see that in this case, its quark composition is given by a down quark and an anti-strange quark. So that's how we write down the quark composition of something. We just say, we just write down the quarks that it's made up of. All kaons have either one strange quark or one strange antiquark. So this first kaon here is the neutral kaon that we looked at, and then the second kaon here is the antiparticle of the neutral kaon. And we can see that from its quark compositions, because its quarks have been swapped for their corresponding antiquarks. Then this is the negative kaon, and this is the positive kaon. So if we write out their quark compositions, for this neutral kaon, we saw that it was down anti-strange. Then we can see here, for the antiparticle of the neutral kaon, we've swapped the quarks for their antiquarks and vice versa. So now we've got the anti-down quark and also the strange quark. 
And then for the negative kaon, we've got the strange quark and the anti-up quark. And then finally, for the positive kaon, we've got the up quark and the anti-strange quark. So these are all of their quark compositions. The strangeness of the kaon is given by the sum of the strangeness values for the individual quarks. So our total kaon strangeness is equal to the sum of the individual quark strangeness values. So the sum of quark strangeness. For example, what is the strangeness of the neutral kaon? So our neutral kaon will have a strangeness that's given by the sum of the down quark strangeness and the anti-strange quark strangeness. So we know that the down quark has a strangeness of zero. And we've said previously that the anti-strange quark has a strangeness of plus one. So that means the overall strangeness of our neutral kaon is given by zero plus one, which is plus one overall. Up and down quarks have no strangeness, meaning the strangeness of a kaon depends on whether it contains a strange quark or an anti-quark. So these are all of our kaons again. So we've got our neutral kaon, then the antiparticle of the neutron kaon, the negative kaon, and the positive kaon. And we've also got their quark compositions. So we've got down anti-strange. So in this case, the strangeness is given by the anti-strange quark. We've then got anti-down and strange. So in this case, the strangeness is given by the strange quark. We've then got strange and anti-up, and here the strangeness is given by the strange quark. And finally, we've got up and anti-strange. So in this case, the strangeness is given by the anti-strange quark. Those with strange quarks have a strangeness of minus one, while those with strange anti-quarks have a strangeness of plus one. So we've said that the strange quark has a strangeness of minus one and the anti-strange quark has a strangeness of plus one. So we can work out the strangeness of all these kaons. So for the neutral kaon, we've got an anti-strange quark, which means we've got a strangeness of plus one. For the antiparticle of the neutral kaon, we have a strange quark, which has a strangeness of minus one. The negative kaon also has a strange quark, so it has a strangeness of minus one. And the positive kaon has an anti-strange quark, so it has a strangeness of plus one. So that's how we can determine the strangeness of our kaons. So we've seen that the strange particles are formed via the strong force and then they decay via the weak interaction. So now we're going to look at strange particle decay in a bit more detail. All strange particles show V-shaped tracks similar to those we see for a kaon in a cloud chamber. So we said that the kaon had a characteristic V-shaped particle track. This is due to the fact that all strange particles decay through the weak interaction shortly after being formed. So let's consider a strange particle. So for example, our kaon, because that's what we've been looking at in a lot of detail. And because all strange particles decay via the weak force or the weak interaction, they produce these V-shaped particle tracks. So that's due to how they decay. So that V-shaped track is from the kaon decay and the decay of all strange particles. Kaons are the only strange particles which can decay into pions alone. So here we start off with a neutral kaon. And this kaon is actually able to decay into a positive pion along with a negative pion. And what's special about kaons is that they're able to only decay into pions. 
whereas other strange particles can't decay into pions alone, they also decay into other particles. For example, a neutral kaon particle may decay into a negative and a positive pion. So we've got our neutral kaon and this is able to only decay into a positive pion and a negative pion. On the other hand, other strange particles decay either in sequence or directly into protons and pions. So let's consider a different strange particle here. And this particular strange particle can't decay into pions alone. It decays into a negative pion, but it also decays into a proton. An example of one of these strange particles is the sigma particle. So that's what we've got here. We've got a sigma particle. And we've said that this sigma particle is also a strange particle. However, when it decays, it decays into pions and protons. So in this case, it decays into a negative pion along with a proton. And since these other strange particles decay into protons, their mass must be greater than the proton rest mass. So if we compare the proton rest mass with the rest mass of a sigma particle, we find that the rest mass of the sigma particle is greater. And that's because we know that the sigma particle decays into a proton along with a pion or other pions. We know that strange particles are always created in pairs through the strong interaction. So for example, the strong force here creates a pair of strange particles. So we've got two strange particles created here. This can occur when a pion collides with a proton. So here we're considering a pion and this can have a collision with a proton. And if they collide, then the strong force, the strong interaction, is able to create a kaon and a sigma particle. And we've said that both the kaon and the sigma particle are strange particles. So from the strong force, we've created a pair of strange particles. For example, we may see the following creation and subsequent decay path for a pair of strange particles. So a pion that we've got here might experience a collision with a proton. And when this pion collides with the proton, the strong force is able to produce a kaon along with a sigma particle. So a pair of strange particles are produced and these two strange particles then decay via the weak interaction. And in the case of the pion, we produce a positive pion and a negative pion. And in the case of the sigma particle, we produce a negative pion and a proton. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.